everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jennifer, and today is a big day. Today is the ranking of all the Dior quints. I have all 19 of them. <laughs> I laugh because that, that scares me slightly. Uh, I have all 19 of them that have come out 2020 and 2021. And so today I am gonna go through and rank every single one and have swatches, live swatches, and pictures of the eye looks that I've done because I've done a video for each one of the quints. If you're interested in seeing that, just stay tuned. Well, the big day is here, guys. It's the ranking of the Dior quints. I have all 19. These are the ones that have come out in 2020 and 2021 that have the new formula. I'm gonna go from least favorite to most favorite, and I'm gonna swatch them on my arm for you when I do it. So I'm gonna try to like, you know, double up on each arm because there's 19 times five. So, you know, 95 swatches, it's a lot. So I'm gonna try to do, <laughs> I'm gonna try to do um, 10 and nine. I'll see if I can fit them all in. I don't have particularly long arms. I am a short person, so we'll see how this goes. All right, guys, let's just dive in. So hopefully while I'm doing this, I'm gonna, I'm not exactly sure when it will pop up, but I will do the eye look that I did. I did screenshots from every eye look that I did because I did a dedicated video to every quint. So my least favorite, and again, guys, I like all of them. So I don't want to get like a bunch of hate mail. How did you not like, I like all of them, but I had to rank them because you told me you really wanted them ranked. So <laughs> is 859, pink corolle and you can see hopefully above the um eye look that i did with it it is very pretty and if you are a pink lover um oh my goodness you're gonna love this quint it's beautiful the pink that's in here the really light pink that's in here um and i'll, I'll show it to you in just a second um is really stunning and for that shade alone i'm happy that i have this quint but on me if i do the entire quint it's just too pink now if i just took a shade or two out of here that would be different because there's a shade in here and i'll show it to you in a second that i absolutely would wear all the time um but Again, I don't wanna base it on one shade or two shades. I wanna base it on the entire quint. So that's how I've ranked these. So that is Pink Curl. So these shades, this shade here, this like purpley shade, it's like a gray, purple, um, lavender, metallic. It's stunning and I love this shade. This shade as the transition shade with this on top, with this as a highlight, I would be all over. But these two shades, this pink and this pink, this light pink, like I said, it's a stunningly beautiful shade. But they're so pink that it overtakes the look on, the, uh, on me anyway. And so it just doesn't really look right with my coloring and my hair. It's just, it's too pink. It's still beautiful. I still like it. Nobody get upset. Number 18, moving on, because otherwise this video is gonna be ridiculously long, is Rouge Trafalgar. Similar reason for not having this ranked higher. You can see it's a little bit broken because it came a little bit broken. But the thing is about this uh, quint is that there are some again there's shades in here that I really do like I, I just think Dior has done a really impressive job of curating these quints so that let's say you're like me and you don't like you know the overall color story that much but there'll still be two shades in there that would really work for you so I think they've really thought that out they've made the quince, the kind of quince that if you don't like every shade, there's probably one or two that you're definitely gonna like. Um, and I just think that's really smart because, you know, there have been a lot of people who have said they buy uh, a quint or a quad 
because they get overwhelmed with a bigger um, palette, but they still want options in a smaller palette. And this gives you that. So there is Rouge Trafalgar, and hopefully the look went up when I was doing that. They are very, very pretty shades. This shade here, the brown shade, I absolutely love. It is like, it's a chocolate brown, and it's really, really beautiful. It's like a satin. This shade is like a raspberry shade, and is really, really pretty on the eye. This red is a true cranberry. If you're looking for a cranberry shade, I love this one. It's really unique. Um, there was a couple in the Tom Ford and the Chanel's that came out, but this is actually one of my favorites. I really like that one. I think it, they did a really good job on it. Again, though, overall, the look, it's just, it's a little too reddish. It's a little too, um, focused on this red color. And so for me, if I had to, I'm, I'm ranking the overall palette, the red on me doesn't really work. It just looks mm, harsh against my skin tone. I think somebody with a deeper skin tone, this is gonna be like absolutely stunning. Number 17 is a newer palette. And I think you guys are gonna be a little surprised that I have it down this low, but the reason I do is again because of the overall color story and the fact that it's not really best for my skin tone and for my coloring i think somebody with blonde hair blue eyes somebody with a deeper skin tone with brown eyes i i think it's gonna look fa fabulous on a lot of people um tavia um chick profile official looks beautiful on this I think Jessica Firefly would look beautiful in this. I just don't think it's necessarily the right sh color story for me. Again, that's why these are down at the bottom. Not because they're not beautiful, okay? So this is Pink Sakura. This is the one that uh, came out this year, and or late, late last year, and I think has been difficult to get, actually. It's a really, really pretty color story. It's just, um, again, <laughs> I, I had to rank them. So this is where it ended up. Part of the issue, of course, is that I love all of these so much that, you know, I, the ones at the top are like, like my favorites, favorites of ever, ever, ever. So you know, this would still rank a lot higher than practically any of the other eyeshadow quads and palettes that I've picked up. So even though it's number 17 on this list, it's still higher than practically like, like half the palettes in my collection. So that's Pink Sakura. And as you can see, Pink Sakura isn't really pink. Pink Sakura is a plum shade. Um, and this shade here is definitely like a purple, like a, a What's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a wine, it's like a wine. It's a beautiful shade. This one is like a lavender, but like deeper, it's got gray tones to it. And this one is really unique. It's like a purple pink. It's got a little bit of a shift. It's really beautiful. And these are toppers. Again, I'm ranking it overall. It's not my favorite color story for me. And you can see, like, looking at all of these, these are all very purpley pink, except for this red, color stories. So that's why we're there. <laughs> number 16. Now, number 16 is not pink. Number 16 is number 649, Nude Dress. I think you guys are gonna be surprised that I have this down this low. Uh, the reason it's there is because Nude Dress, although has like one of my favorite shades in it, and I'll show it to you in a minute, on the eye, this looks very, very neutral. So neutral that I feel like it's very similar to other palettes that I have. That being said, it the formula 
is like better than practically any formula except for maybe Sydney Grace. That is nude dress. So you can tell it's a very different color story. So that's nude dress. Nude dress is a beautiful color story. And if you're looking for an everyday neutral browns, camels palette, it's perfect. It is. It's just that I feel like I have it in Sydney Grace. I have it in Natasha Denona. I have it in, not Pat McGrath. <laughs> she doesn't really do those shades. But I mean, she has some of those shades, but you get my picture. You get my point. Um, so I just, Chanel, Tom Ford, I feel like it's not as special. It's not that it's not beautiful. <laughs> like I keep saying that. I feel bad. I feel like I'm hurting my own like dogs here. But like I don't have children, so you know. Um, but this shade, this one right here, is a really, really pretty shade. It's, um, it's got like it's a satin and it has like a copper, but a camel kind of shade to it. It looks beautiful all over the eye. That shade is probably one of my favorites in all of them because it's just an excellent one to wear just like all the time. This one in particular, I don't think is like too many others that I have. It kind of does remind me of a Sydney Grace because it has like a creamy kind of shimmer. It's a beautiful shade. It, it's this one in the palette. So if you're the kind of person who is looking for an everyday palette that is completely neutral and looks, and you'll see, see by the look, neutral on the eye. I'm very pale, remember, um, <laughs> if you could forget. Uh, and that's what you're looking for. This formula is amazing. Run out and get this one because this would be the one for you. Number 15 is also a newer palette. That is number 529 Wild Brown. Now this palette is, it looked really nice on my eye. It's got a mixture of um, matte shades and a very, very shimmery white shade. There's a brown in here, you'll see it in a second, that looks a little similar to the brown that's in uh, Rouge Trafalgar. It's not the same, um, but it's similar. Um, and there's a, uh, what would I call this shade? Cranberry-like shade that's in here that is actually really beautiful. So if you like that cranberry shade, this is really nice. So this is Wild Brown. This is the brown I'm talking about here. You can see how like in Rouge Trafalgar, it's a similar brown. It's not the same though. I know under the lights it might look it, but the Rouge Trafalgar is actually lighter than this one. This one's a very, very deep brown. This shade here is the one I'm talking about, the cranberry. It's cranberry because you can see like the cranberry and the red in Rouge Trafalgar, but it's got like this um, really pretty shimmer satin to it. So it's really nice really nice look. Again, it's just, when I, when I put it on the eye, you saw the eye look, it just wasn't my favorite on me. When I did it, I was like, oh, it looks pretty, but I wasn't like, for me, like when I did these rankings, I went through and thought to myself, when I did the eye looks, and then I redid a couple of them, did I feel like, oh, I wanna go out, like I wanna go and have people see this? Was it like, I don't wanna take this off? That's how I did the rankings. So again, this is personal. This is my preference. Uh, I assume you all have very different rankings if you have all 19 of these. Um, but that's kind of what my, it was sort of a gut reaction to how the shades looked on me. Okay, number 14. Number 14 is going to be, uh, I think the one that a lot of people not get upset about. I mean, hopefully you guys don't get upset about any of this because it's just, makeup and you know my personal opinion about ranking eyeshadows but you know you never know this is the one i think people might have the most like not surprised but just be like oh really because it's a really good palette this is 669 soft cashmere and it is a really good palette it's beautiful it's, it's stunning um it's a very wearable beautiful shades um again there's one shade in here I'll point out which one it is that I have worn on 
my eye um, by itself because I just think it's that beautiful and I love it. Um, and I think overall the color story is really well curated, but it's it it wasn't one when I wore it that I when I did the look on myself that I was like I have to I can never take this off. <laughs> this is soft cashmere. So you can see that there this shade here, this brown, is very similar to the one that's in wild brown. And this is the shade I was talking about. This is the first shade that I swatched in um, soft cashmere, and it's just a beautifully shimmery shade. It has some similarities to the shimmer that I like in Nude Dress, but this is much more coppery. This one is much more like mushroomy. It's really beautiful. This shade here is stunning. It's, it's not that it's not gorgeous, like I said. These are all beautiful. <laughs> but um, it just, when I did it on my eye, I wasn't just overwhelmed, guys. I was just like, oh, it's really, really pretty. It looks really good on the eye. The soft cashmere is sort of like a cooler, um, version of nude dress and it's beautiful but I feel like I have it like I feel like it's similar to like the Tom Ford's if you I will make sure that some of the videos that I've done on Dior are linked but I also have a Dior playlist so you can go to the playlist that says Dior and you can see the video on every single one of these quints um, I did comparisons in those videos to Tom Ford and to Chanel etc etc for each quint and what I would say is, it looks to me very similar to some of the Tom Fords that I have. Again, favorites, beautiful shades, but I have them. So I have to, I have to rank these somehow. All right, so we're through six, and my arm is pretty much full. So I think what we'll do, if we do six, <laughs> if we do six, six and then another seven we could do that um but there's no way i'm gonna be able to fit them all there's just no way i don't have enough arm length like and i could do smaller swatches but then you wouldn't really be able to see which i don't want to do so we'll do six six and then we'll do six and like one to Next finish this. one is an interesting it's gonna be um 13 and 12. The reason it's gonna be 13 and 12 and I'm gonna do them at the same time is because it's Poncho and Tribal. Tribal is 679 and Poncho is 559. Now, Tribal is the one that I believe you can't really get in the United States anymore. Um, you guys correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can't. This is Poncho, this is Tribal. They are almost identical and I did a video where I compared the two of them and basically said that um, Tribal is has a little bit more peach and Poncho has a little bit warmer. But on the eye, you really can't tell the difference. I mean, there's a slight difference, but it's not worth spending, you know, whatever it is for these quints. Now I've even forgotten how much they are. Um, it's not worth it. So. I, I'd say that they're basically the same. I ranked um, Poncho a little bit above Tribal, but they're 12 and 13. They're basically interchangeable, in my opinion. So what I'll do is I'll swatch them um, like right next to each other. I'll do, okay, so that one is Tribal. And then we'll do Poncho right here so you can see the difference. And I actually really like Poncho. I think it is a beautiful quad on the eye. I think it's got a great color story. It, they are both warmer toned, but you'll see when I swatch these that um, Poncho is a little bit cooler. This is Tribal, this is Poncho. And you can see, like, see this, this is more like, like a um, orange. This is more apricot. The brown is a little cooler here. These shades are, this one's a little cooler. This shade is a little bit different. So they're, they're slightly different. But like I said, on the eye, if you watch that video, they don't look that different. All right, guys, we're down to 11. <laughs> All right. Number 11 is New Look. New Look 
is number 599. And New Look looks in the palette like a pretty, I don't wanna say basic, but kinda of like soft cashmere. Which is, I mean, a good thing. Like, <laughs> basics are good. Um, but New Look is actually, it's pretty interesting. Okay, there's a topper shade in a lot of these palettes, you'll notice. There's also a very deep brown in a lot of these shades, in a lot of these um, quints. There's a shade in here that it's not a brown, it's almost, it's almost black. Um, I mean, it, it is brown, but it's very, very deep. And I really like it. I think it's really unusual. Okay, that is new look. You can see it is like these three, these five shades here. It is really unusual and it is much more pigmented and impactful than it looks in the pan. This is the, the middle shade, that like purpley shade, but it's not purple. It's like gray, purple, brown. It's a beautiful shade. This one is gorgeous. It's like a satiny, um, I don't know what you would call the shade, but it's like, it's got like a mushroom base, but it also has like a gold to it. This shade is technically brown, but it almost comes off as like a black. It's gorgeous. It's not as stark as a black, but it's, cause it's got the brown undertone, really stunning. And this shade is just beautiful. It has some similarities to this one that was in, what was this one? This one was Soft Cashmere, yeah. It has some similarities to Soft Cashmere. I think really the difference between this one and Soft Cashmere is this purple. Like I said, it's purple, but it's not. It really is a complex shade. Um, and it's this middle shade here, and when you look at it, it just looks like aubergine. You're like, oh, it's purple. But when you wear it on the eye, it really is just, it's stunning. It really is beautiful. Number 10. Number 10 is denim. Denim is the color story that attracted to me to these quints in the first place. So it's kind of funny that it's the, like right in the middle. Um, but the thing about denim is, although absolutely stunning, and as I've said, it's the color story that attracted me in the first place, there are blues in here that are so beautiful, so stunning. Um, I just picked up the Kaleidos Nebula, the Club Nebula palette, and there are some blues in there that are really, really nice. I, I love blues, I'm a, a sucker for that. Um, and so the blues in here are really pretty. Um, I'll show you in a second. There's one that like, there's this very deep, it's like more than navy, It's it's got more of a, I don't know, it's more complicated than navy. It's just beautiful. And then there's like this teal, they are really did a great job. The thing is, as much as I like them, and as much as I think they are beautiful, and they are, they're, at least for me, not really an everyday palette. So I love the shades. These blues, and this is, there's like a little tan shade up here. These blues are, I think, just stunning. And the pigment's amazing. The look on the eye was gorgeous. I love them. But I was trying to be realistic about like, okay, I'm ranking them overall as a palette. How often do I really wear that? Not often. I ha I mean, honestly, I love the blues and I could see me like, like this is the navy one I'm talking about. It has like a purple undertone. This one's like a shimmer, it shifts. It's got like a gray slash blue. This blue is just stunning. This teal is amazing. So if I use like, I would probably use like one of these shades and then a tan. Like I use the blue, like a, maybe a brown tan shade, like maybe even this one um, in the transition and then the blue on the eye or, or vice versa, which is what I did with this look. But four blues, I'm probably not gonna do. That's just me though. I don't wear a lot of color every day. I usually use like two or three and shades, maybe four shades, but that's it for the looks that I do on a normal basis for my life. Zoom calls, if I go back to traveling ever, <laughs> like when I go to meetings, 
it's just not, I wouldn't use four blues on my eye, that's all. So I will say this, if it wasn't for the fact that that's just, I'm trying to rank them practically, this would probably be my favorite quint because these are the colors I like the most. These are the colors that I'm like, I love those colors. I just think as an overall quint, it's probably not something I'm gonna wear very often. But if you would, you're gonna love the denim because it's so beautiful, so pretty. Number nine, so we're getting into the top here, guys. Number nine is Golden Snow. Golden Snow was one of the holidays. And it's just a really pretty um, quint. I actually did a couple videos with this. I did a video where, uh, I did a video where I did like, you know, like a daytime easy look with it. And then I did what you would consider a more, you know, holiday look with it. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful quint. There's a brown in here. There's, you'll notice, I think, when we look at the, the arms that there's a lot of the quints have a very deep brown in them. That's not a shock. Um, you know, it's, it's a really good shade to use as a deepening of your crease or your transition. Again, it's not as harsh as a black would be. So, you know, that kind of makes some sense. Um, I think a lot of palettes have that. But the one thing I'd say about this one that is unique is the gold that's in here. So this is the palette here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five shades. This is like a peach shade, which is really pretty shimmer. This is a white shimmery shade. Um, it's got a little bit of opacity to it, but it's more of a topper, but you can see it better than some of the other toppers. Here's the brown I'm talking about. You can see there's a lot of similarities with some of the other browns that are in these quints. And then you have this golden green shade, which I have to say for me, like the olive that's in here, that's probably my favorite shade. It's not just a simple olive. It has like a golden flecked olive, beautiful. And this gold shade is just really pretty like on the lid itself, especially if you put it like just in the middle of your eyelid. It's really pretty. The Golden Snow is a gorgeous quint. You could definitely make it more every day. Like I said, I did a look with it uh, that made it more every day. I really think it's something you could wear all the time. So again, so this is where we started. And then here, I'll do another one on this arm and then we're gonna have to wash these off and uh, unfortunately and go to a new arm. Okay, um, not a new arm, but like a clean arm. Wish I had another arm. All right, so that was number nine. Number eight, it's kind of fitting that it comes up here and I didn't do it on purpose, I really didn't, um, is Black Knight. Black Knight is the other holiday quint. I didn't plan it that way, seriously. The way I did these rankings, I promise you. <laughs> that was not my planning. Um, so a lot of people, when they look at Black Knight, I think they think it's too deep for them, like too much for them. And you know what, I could do it here. Huh, all right. The Black Knight is deep. I'm not gonna say that it's not, okay? It is a deep quint. It is pigmented, but I did, like I did with the Golden Snow, I think it's the same video actually, um, a look with it where it's very toned down and it looked beautiful. So you could use these shades in a very deep holiday, over the top kind of look, or you could shear them out. It's really not that hard. The blue in here I think is really pretty and really unique. It's a blackish blue and the um, red cranberry shade in the middle, it's not, it looks like that in the palette, but on the, um, on the eye, it has more of like a purple. That is Black Knight. And that is that middle shade that looks like purplish, but that's what it looks like on the skin. It's a really unusual shade. 
I do see similarities here in the um, in the new look palette, the shade that was in there. There are some similarities between those two shades. You can see it, but overall, I have to say, guys, it's a really unique shade. I feel like like a color wheel. That's kind of fun. Okay, <laughs> sorry. All right, so that's Black Knight. All right, we are now at where are we at? Number seven. All right, number seven is Blooming Bouquet. Blooming Bouquet is also one of the new ones that just came out. For my coloring, this was my favorite of the new ones. Um, cause, and you can tell that because it's the highest ranked of the new ones. But I would say it's not super pigmented. It's a very pretty eye look. Um, I really enjoyed it. You can see the look hopefully above, or maybe I'm doing this as a voiceover. I don't know yet, but you'll see the look one way or another. And I, I really do think it's pretty. I think it looked really nice on. Um, I think it's a really pretty color story. It's like a, I think it's more of a plummy color story. It's not really a pink one. Although again, there's definitely pink in here, but it's more of a, you know, a, a neutral pink plum, not something that I think a non pink lover like myself uh, is, you know, afraid of. I think it's just a really pretty quint. I have become much more comfortable with pinks. Don't get me wrong. I like them a lot more than I did, but <laughs> When I like a cool color story, it tends to be more cool browns, cool tans, and like more of this like lavender kind of story. Number six. Number six, talking about plums, is Tutu. Tutu is again a cool color story, but has more of this like plummy, cool browns kind of thing. And it's a really pretty, they're all really pretty. I've said that a million times, but I really like this one, like for an everyday kind of look, even though I think it's not really a neutral. Um, I think it's definitely cool leaning, but I don't know, there's something about this that I think really works like as an everyday color story. There's also a lavender in here. You'll see it in a minute. That is so pretty. Okay, so here's the color story. One, two, three, four, five. You see this is the first shade. It's kind of like a, a cool camel shade. Here's the topper. Here's the uh, cool brown, which is in, like I said, practically every other quint. Here is the, um, this is really pretty. It's almost like a mauve, but this lavender, this is like a shimmery lavender and it's so pretty. So started here <laughs> and then up here and then here and this way and then here we go. And I am literally a color wheel here. Look at this. Wow. It's actually very pretty. Okay. So. That was number six. That was two, two. So I'm going to go wash my arms off and then we will do the top five. Okay, guys, this is it. Top five. Ready? Number five. Jungle. So jungle is a gorgeous, 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 gorgeous quint. And it's got all my favorite green shades in here. So I guess you'll be asking, you know, why isn't it like number one. And actually it was number one for some time. Like I said, this is taking me a while to put this thing together. So I have gone back and forth on the top five. I don't know how many times. It's so funny um, because you wouldn't think it would be that hard, but it really was for me anyway. This color story is like, like my favorite color story. The green in here, the deep green that's in here, the olive green that's in here, the peach that's in here, the brown, it's perfectly, in my 
Like, if I was gonna create an eye palette, this is like what I would pick. So again, why isn't it number one? The reason it's not number one is although I love these shades and I think they are gorgeous, and if I was like painting with them or putting them together on like a piece of paper, I would pick these. They don't necessarily look the best on me. And I, I tried to be like honest. I asked my husband, <laughs> I asked other people, I asked which look they like better. I went back and looked at the videos and rewatched every video of these top five. And I have to say, I am ranking these really, by the way, when I looked at the look, I was like, yeah, that looks, that's the best. Like that looks really good on me. Like I was like, that's a really good look for me. Again, these are my top five, so I think they all look good. But this, although absolutely stunning, I think these other four that are ahead of it actually look better with my coloring. Um, it's just, you know, it's kind of funny because the greens do look fabulous with the red hair. I love a good green, but it's still number five. You guys are gonna, I know you're gonna like write in and tell me what you think all of these rankings and whether you agree with me. So feel free. I mean, that's, that's, that's totally cool. Okay, so number four was not, like when I, I, I was not totally overwhelmed by this color story when I first saw it. So the fact that it's in my top five is bizarre, but I loved the way it looked on the eye. And I think it's mostly because the way it looks with my hair. This is 689 Mitza. And it's a very warm color story, but there are a few shades in here that I have to say, there it's very fall-like, I love fall. That could be part of it. Um, but I just really liked the way this looked on. Um, you're hopefully seeing the, the look that I did. And I just thought it looked so pretty. I was just like, wow, like that, that's just a really good look. And I've, you know, tried to recreate different looks um, using this palette, like different combinations of colors. And I always, I always like it. <laughs> and again, it's not the color story that I'm instantly attracted to in, gar in regards to shades, but it really looks very pretty. It just, it looks really nice when I wear it. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with this shade here, which I absolutely in love with. It's like a pumpkin spice latte <laughs> shade. And this like cranberry shade is similar to the two others that I mentioned before. It has this like, yes, it's cranberry, but it's like, it's got like a gold undertone to it that shifts. It's really pretty. So the Mitza palette, I, I, I will tell you right now, when I bought it, I bought it because I was just like continuing, like I was getting everything, but I really, really love it. So the funny thing is like, about what attracts your eye and like what you like looking at something versus what looks good on you isn't always the same if you're being totally honest with yourself. Um, but sometimes it is, but for me, I tried to be as critical as I could be to come up with a list that I really felt proud of. <laughs> so that's why it took so long. Okay. Number three, Black Bow. This is a really pretty, pretty, um, I keep saying that, but it's a beautiful quint. Now you're gonna ask me, I think, what the difference is between this and um, Black Knight, because they are similar color stories, and you'd be right, they are. The, um, the difference is, in my opinion, is that this one, and I don't really know, I think it's, I think it's undertones of the shades, this one is cooler, and I like that on me with these shades, like with the gray, um, gray, silver, black, the Black Knight is actually a little warmer on, when it goes on my skin. Uh, this one has a little bit cooler, almost blue kind of undertone, bluish purple. Um, you'll see it in the sparkle, the, the sparkle shades. They almost look blue. 
And so that's why this one is so far ahead of the other one. The color stories though are very similar. I did in the video, like I said, go to my Dior playlist if you wanna look at all of them. But you'll see I did comparisons and it's just, it's a, it's a warmer, Black Knight is warmer somehow. This one is cooler. And this shade right here is such a stunning shade. It is very much like a Sydney Grace or a Pat McGrath. Like it's so, it's so smooth, Natasha Denona. It is so smooth and so beautiful. And it's got this, see how, I mean, it's silver, but it's blue. Do you see what I mean? And this one, this black, this is like, this is like a charcoal gray, but it's charcoal gray with like a black undertone and sparkles. It's beautiful. And then this one is lavender. So like, if you put like this and this together with like this on top, it's beautiful. If you just put this all over the eye, it's beautiful. You want something like that really pops. You put this on all over the eye. It's like just sparkle. It's, it's a be. I love this. I love this palette. The only reason it's not number one or number two, and again, I went back and forth, it is a little bit more intense. So it's not an everyday, but I was so blown away by like this shade alone and this one, and this one is just a gorgeous lavender that I had to rank it incredibly high. I also thought it looked really good on, on my skin, on my eyes, um, but it's not necessarily everyday unless you tone it down a little bit. Like if you use this shade and this shade alone, that would be fine. But when you put them all together, it is. No, I mean, it depends on your, like, everyone has a different opinion of what um, neutral <laughs> is. Everyone has a different opinion of what every day is. If you're somebody who is in the artistic fields, you, you know, you can wear rainbows on your eyes and it's fine. If you're a lawyer, I'm not saying it's not fine because maybe your company is fine with that or maybe your workplace is fine with it, but it's more of a question. How's that? It's more of something where you'd have to actually, you'd have to actually know like, okay, is this something that is um, okay for, for the place that I work at? Um, and then it not only just work, maybe you just don't feel comfortable with that. I know a lot of people who like neutrals. They're very comfortable with neutrals. They, and when they say neutrals, they mean browns, camels. Um, that's okay. That's a good thing. You like what you like. So, you know, for me, I am more comfortable closer to that end of the spectrum. I like doing color, but I like it in limited amounts. So this one, you know, I had to rank down a little bit than like one or two. So we're now at two and one guys, this months long process, of putting these things together. So I think you're gonna be really surprised with, well, maybe not because maybe you've been paying attention to the video and you've picked up with what I'm wearing. Maybe not. Number two is Grand Ball. Grand Ball, when I did the video, I basically said that it wasn't one of my favorites and I didn't really like it that much. I just, I, I went back and rewatched all the videos. And I think that is just hilarious. Because the reason I said it, um, and it's still true, is that most of the shades that are in Grand Ball are like really light. They are um, not very pigmented and they have like just sort of like topper shades, shiny shimmery shades, but they're not like super pigmented or anything. There's one super pigmented shade and the rest are somewhat pigmented. But here's the thing. The way and I've been talking about this throughout this video, the way it looks on my arm or the way it looks in a picture is different than the way it looks on your eye. So this is Grand Ball. This is what it looks like. And as I said, all these shades are very light in tone. And then the middle shade is the super dark, deep brown. It's a cool toned brown. Here's the interesting thing though. This is like a cool toned, it almost has like a little bit of um, lavender in it. It's kind of interesting. This is like a peachy shimmer. This is just a topper. This is a gold tone shimmer and it's like an apricot shimmer. But when I put it on, when I did the eye look, and I'm not gonna say there's multiple eye looks cause there really isn't with this one. 
Like really, this is the only transition shade in here. The, the middle shade is the transition shade. You don't really have another transition shade because all the other shades are either toppers or just like shimmers. So it's not really a good transition. So there's really, there's not a ton of looks to do with it, right? Because you basically have one deep shade that can be used, that's a matte, and the rest of the shades are shimmers. However, that look with the, with the deep brown in the, in the transition, with the other shades, whether you pick all of them or one of them, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's just stunning. It looks beautiful on the eye. And I got more compliments on that look than practically any other one I did. And that day that I did it, um, I wore that like all day long and I did not want to take it off. I loved it. And I've done it several times since and I've been on like Zoom calls with it. Everyone has asked me like, what are you wearing? How, what, who is that? Like, where did you buy that? I love the look that I create with this. It's one look practically over and over and over again, but I love it. So you can do, and I, you know, I'm saying you can only do one look. You can do different looks. You can use like the peachier one and then just have it all over the eye. You like, I can show you on my arm. You could take like this shade, which is like I said, more of a, um, has a little more pink to it. This one has a little bit more gold. This one has a little bit more apricot. You can just do like this and this one, or this and this one, or this and this one. You do get a little bit of a different look. You could just use this all over the eye, which I've done. You could use the topper on top of the brown, like put the brown all over the eye and just put the topper on top. You could use the brown on just the outer corners and then the shimmer all over the eye. There are different ways to use it. So I don't want to make it sound like that. What I mean is there's not different deep shades. There's not different matte shades. There's not different transitions. They're all shimmers and one deep brown matte. <laughs> so there are limits to how it's going to look, but I absolutely love it. And every time I wear it, I'm happy to be wearing it. Every time I wear it, I think, wow, that looks really pretty. So it is number two on my list. Why is it not number one? And what is number one? Now, if you're familiar with Dior and if you've been paying attention to this video and you've been looking at my face and not all the swatches, you might have realized that I am wearing purple eyeshadow. And at the beginning of my venture here on YouTube, which is almost a year when this goes up, I thought it was kind of fitting actually to do this because I feel like Dior has been a big part of my channel because when the Dior Quince came out and they reformulated, I think it was like May, June timeframe, something like that. I bought like, I don't know, like six of them. And it was unusual for me to do because I was not a huge Dior fan. I, I love Dior, like, you know, Christian Dior. I mean, I love Dior, but Dior makeup, I actually wore, I think I wore Dior makeup uh, at my wedding, but it's not, it was never overly pigmented. It was never, the eyeshadows weren't like the, sh you know what I mean? They weren't, they weren't my favorite shadows by a long shot, but there was something about these quints. And it, as I said, it was mostly denim that called out to me and I was like, I have to buy these. And so I did. And so since I bought them very early on, I was able to get them before a lot of other people were able to get them because they sold out really quickly. Um, so I did a lot of videos with the Dior quints and comparisons, and it actually got me a lot of viewers and maybe some of you found me through, you know, the, the reviews I did on Dior. So I felt like it was a good wrapping up. It's, like I said, it's been about a year um, that my channel has been here and when this goes up. And so I thought it was fitting to uh, have Dior sort of finish out the year. But I also wanted to say that at the beginning of that year, I mentioned in numerous videos how I don't really like pinks and purples, <laughs> which is true. I, I really didn't. I was kind of like, you know, they were okay, but I didn't really feel like they were my shades. I have one pink sweater, <laughs> which I've worn in a couple videos lately. I, I will buy more, I promise, because I actually like it on me, but I have always felt like the pink or the purple clashes with the red hair, but the more I wear it, I think it has to do with the type of pink. 
It's like the pink coral that I that I put at the bottom of the list. It's too Barbie pink. I think that type of pink does not work on me. I still would argue with someone if they said that they thought it did. Not because I, you know, you have your right to your opinion. I just don't like it on myself. But something that has more of a purple, more of a gray, that I think does look really nice. And so I went from, I don't like pinks and purples, to the number one on my list being Plum Tool. And it's kind of funny because this one's a little broken because it came that way. There was a couple that I got that, uh, that came broken. And I have gone back and forth, as I said, with my top five so many times. But this Quint, and I'll get you a close up of what it, it's on my eyes right now. I love the way it looks. And it's interesting because it's not that different from Tutu. It's not that different from Blooming Bouquet, but it's different enough. And there's a couple reasons for it. One is the shade that's in the middle. It's this very lavender purple that has like a gray shift to it. But it's also the silvery purple shades that surround it. So you've got, this is the shade that's in the middle right here. And as you can see, it's a very purple, it's a very lavendery gray shade. This one again, lavender, it has like a silver component. This one has a little bit more of a plum. And these, although pinkish, still have that like icy grayish kind of cast. And I think with my coloring, it just works. Or at least for me, it does. So I'll bring you in close so you can see the look. And this is my number one plum tool. So guys, that's it. I did all 19. They are all ranked. I am so happy that this is done. I know to all of you out there, I mean, I, I have a very, like a, from a day to day, I have a very stressful job. I have like responsibilities that are very, very serious. Yet this seemed harder <laughs> than like practically all the things I do day to day. I don't know why it was just so hard for me to rank these things. So I did promise that I would do a Tom Ford one. And again, if I say I'm gonna do something, I will do it. I just don't have a timeline for that one. Um, I probably have more yeah, I think I definitely have more Tom Fords than I even have Dior's. So it will happen, but that, I, I'm not gonna give you a timeline because I just can't guarantee anything. This took me months <laughs> to do. I went back and forth. I, you don't even wanna know how many people got annoyed with me. Like, Jen, just pick a number, <laughs> like, just pick. Um, I love them all. I really do. I will continue to wear them all the time. They are, I think, my favorites. Sydney Grace is like my favorite formula right now, but for like a quint, like a quad, you know, like a small palette, these are my favorites. Um, Tom Ford and Chanel, I, I do love them. I'm not gonna say I don't, but they just haven't lived up to the same quality, you know, palette after palette after palette. All of these perform the same. All of these look beautiful all of these work on the eye. I have not had any of them be a problem. The only brand that is coming close is Suku, but it's a very different look. It is much more, and I've said this a lot, like a watercolor, they're buildable. The Dior's are pigmented and creamy and just, I, I, <laughs> if you had to take away every, like if, if someone said you could only have one brand in eyeshadow, I think I'd pick these. I mean, I, I don't know, but I, I think I'd be pretty happy with these 19 quints. I think I could get by. So they're just all beautiful and I, I love them all. Oh, I'm so glad that's done. <laughs> I'm so happy now. 
So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to hear your comments on all of this because I'm sure there's going to be some. Uh, <laughs> Good, bad, whatever. So again, thanks so much for joining me, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video really soon.